Um, and then I just had to make a special note of, about this topic, which is microRNAs as circulating biomarkers, because again, there's sort of been a resurgence in this field as well. So this is just to note that um, there is RNA present in uh, liquid biopsies. Um, most well studied, of course, are microRNAs for a lot of different reasons. Uh, Predominantly because microRNAs are more well studied, they were the first time coding RNAs really to be discovered that had some function. But interestingly, what we found out over time is that microRNAs are very stable in circulation. They're resistant to RNAs. Um, that means they can survive extended storage, uh, multiple freeze thaws. If you have something like serum just stored in a minus 80 freezer, it could be that that microRNA entity could still be present from something that's 20 years old or something like that. Um, and it's been shown that these microRNAs are, again, in, 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 this, in the serum or in plasma or in other fluids, that the levels are altered in disease state versus a, a normal state, I guess. Um, a good example of this is um, not any particular microRNA. There's a, there's a panel of microRNAs, but um, they these microRNAs essentially could be better predictors of certain diseases like ovarian cancer. And, and the benefit, again, to a microRNA is that it could be better predictors of things uh, compared to what's out there, compared to the standard, right? So we all know that something like C-reactive protein is kind of a poor marker. I mean, it's a marker of inflammation, but unfortunately the tissue is already damaged and things are already happening. You'd want to identify a marker that can tell you that something is going on way before the disease is to a point where you're just sort of treating the symptoms. Um, a good example also uh, is um, using microRNAs and comparing it to something like CA125, which in ovarian cancer, we all know, has a you know kind of average to poor sensitivity of picking up or detecting ovarian cancer. But it, um, in this particular study by Resnick et al., there have been some microRNAs that you can always find consistently elevated in the patients of ovarian cancer, even though they have normal CA125 levels. So it takes a lot of work, um, but I think you, you know, microRNAs do have this potential um, to serve as good biomarkers. And this is just a table showing some I mean, canonical microRNAs that we know, for instance, LET7 is a tumor suppressor. Uh, in lung, in breast, and many other solid uh, tumor systems. And then if you look in the serum, you can also see that in most cases, there's always a little discrepancy, but you can, you can find it um, um, in, certain in certain states uh, downregulated when patients are being, uh, basically when patients are, are, are having lung cancer compared to a normal state. Another good one, you know, is MIR-21. That, that's a microRNA that seems to be uh, very oncogenic. Um, if you just take a, a biopsy from a tumor specimen compared to normal, usually you will always find that that microRNA will be overexpressed, um, and it clearly associates with decreased overall survival. Um, but then if you look in the serum, you know, again, you do find it highly expressed in breast cancer patients compared to normal. I expressed in ovarian cancer patients. Um, so, you know, I think it's just eventually what will have to happen is at some point when enough of these studies are done and they're done in a controlled enough manner, probably some meta-analysis has to happen. So we can just kind of eventually weed out some of this that noise a little bit. And I think you'll find the true uh, biomarkers for that particular disease. So... Um, it's just also uh, a little frustrating in this particular space, only in the sense that microRNAs are very dynamically changing entities, I guess you can say. They're, so um, a lot of things can cause microRNAs to be differentially expressed, even in normal patients. And so I think that's where I'm kind of bringing up this issue of proper controls and, and running your experiments and that um, more a little more carefully on that regard rather than just taking some randomly healthy patients because the variation there may swap out your effect in your disease state. To view the full video of this and all of our other webinars for bioscientists at the bench, 
please visit bitesizebio.com slash webinars.